Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to the temple. This is a special Shabbat. We're celebrating the birthday of Isaac Mayer Wise, the founder of the reform movement here in the United States, in America, and the founder of all the major institutions of the reform movement, the Union for Reform Judaism, the Central Conference of American Reform Rabbis, and also the first prayer books. Uh, we're using one of the first uh, prayer books or a new edition of it, so it's a very special uh, Shabbat. And we begin in this special prayer book uh, on page four to sing uh, the sun on the three tops, Achama uh, Merosha Ilanot. Turn to page seven for the blessing for the candles. I would like to invite Sam and his parents, Jessica and Jeff, to lead us uh, in uh, the blessing over the candles and then the fruit of the vine. teaching and commands us to kindle the Sabbath lights. Turn to page 308 for the blessing over the fruit of the vine. Baruch Atah Anai Eloheinu Melech Haolam 
Bare Pri Hagafim. Let us praise the eternal God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Part of the special Shabbat is that we have blessings for our 7th and 8th graders. I think that Sam, you're the only one that showed up from your uh, <laughs> class. If I'm missing a 7th or 8th grader, uh, please uh, let me know. So uh, I, I, I want to say to Sam, Arachamanu yechadesh alecha ve'aleinu et ha-shana azo letova u'livracha. May the merciful one renew for you the coming year and all years for goodness and for a blessing. And let us say, Amen. Can I have a story? <laughs> and we have also anniversary blessings. Is there uh, anyone who is celebrating their uh, anniversary in this month of April? No? no. Okay. So uh, we go back to uh, page two to sing together Lechadodi and to welcome the Sabbath bride. Turn now to page eight. Creator of the universe, we lift up our hearts to you who makes heavens and earth, the infinite heavens and the quiet stars tell your endless power. We turn from our daily toil, from its difficulties and its conflicts, from its clamor and its weariness, to meditate on the serene calm of your presence, which pervades all creation, hallowing our lives with the blessing of Sabbath peace. Source of peace. Come, let us sing unto God. Let us raise our voices in joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let our voices ring out in joyful song. Sing unto the Eternal One. Let us proclaim God's saving power from day to day. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the field exalt and all that is therein. Let the righteous be glad in God's presence. Give thanks to God's everlasting name. Please rise. 
ברכו את אדוני המבורך, praise the eternal God to whom all praise is due, ברוך אדוני המבורך לעולם ועד, let us praise the eternal God. Praise you, O God, ruler of the world, by whose law the shadows of evening fall and the gates of each new day are opened. In wisdom you have established the changes of times and seasons and ordered the ways of the stars in their heavenly courses. Creator of heaven and earth, source of all life, reign over us forever. We praise you for the day and its work and for the night and its rest. Infinite Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Hear, O Israel Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Leolam Vaed Let us praise God who rules in glory forever and ever Please be seated and join me on page 11 as we read together the Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, bechol levavcha, ubechol nafshecha, ubechol meodecha. Ve'hayu adevarim aele, asher anochi metzavcha hayom al levavcha. Ve'shinantam levanecha, ve'dibarta bam, be'shivtecha be'veitecha, ובלכתך בדרך, ובשוך בך ובקומך, וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך, ובישריך, למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם, אני אדוני אלוהיכם. And we read together, You shall love the eternal God. The eternal truth is that you alone are our God and there is none else. Great deeds have you wrought on our behalf and wonders without number. You have been with us during the long years of oppression, 
Our faith sustained us even when our people suffered the deepest anguish. May your way guide the lives of all your children and your truth unite our hearts in fellowship. Grant that we may lie down in peace and rise up again unto life. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with wise counsel. Be a shield about us, protecting us from hatred and war, from pestilence and sorrow. Curb within us the inclination to do evil and protect us within the embrace of your love. God, our going out and our coming in unto life and peace from this time forth and forever. We praise you, God, who spreads your shelter of peace over us and over all those who dwell on earth. <laughs> Together, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. And we turn to the top of page 15. We praise you, God of our mothers and fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah, and all their generations. You bestow loving kindness upon all your children. You remember the devotion of those who came before us. In your love, you bring redemption to their descendants for the sake of your name. You are our ruler and helper, our savior and protector. We praise you, eternal one, shield of Abraham and help of Sarah. Eternal.
We rejoice that amid the endless desires and struggles of our daily lives, the Sabbath has been given to us as a day of refreshment for the soul. We thank you, God, for all the blessings which you have bestowed upon us during the past week for the preservation of our lives, of our health and our strength, for the joys of home, of love, of friendship, and for all the good influences which support us in times of trial and turmoil. You bestow upon us the blessings that brighten our days. In our gratitude, may we also face with courage and faith the sorrows that cast their shadows over us. In all our experiences, we seek to recognize your guidance and your wisdom. May this Sabbath bring rest to every disquieted heart and be a healing balm to every wounded soul. Endow us with a contented spirit when we pray for new blessings. May we come to you in the spirit of humility, remembering that we cannot know whether what we ask is really for our good. Help us to find meaning and hope whether our petitions are granted or denied. When we pledge to you our loyalty, may we remember that only by clinging to your commandments, by faithfulness to our duties, and through the goodness of our deeds, can we make our worship truly acceptable to you. Grant us peace, your most precious gift, eternal source of peace, and enable our people Israel to be its messenger unto all the world. Bless our country, that it may ever be a stronghold of peace and its advocate in the council of nations. May contentment reign within our borders, health and happiness within our homes. Strengthen the bonds of friendship and harmony among the inhabitants of all lands, plant virtue in every soul, and may the love of your name hallow every home and every heart. We praise you, O God, giver of peace. Amen. <coughs>
take a moment for a silent prayer. We all need healing and courage and strength in our lives, in the life of everyone that is dear to us. The Misha Berach, the prayer for healing and courage and strength, is on page 384. As we name in our hearts those we know that need healing and courage and strength, we sing together the Misha Berach. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So we have a Torah portion that is called Tazria in Hebrew. Normally a Torah portion would be called on the first or the second word of the uh, Torah portion, but this is in the end of the second verse of the Torah portion, which tells me that the word is actually something that the rabbis who named the Torah portions chose on purpose. So I want to explain uh, this word, uh, which is a very unique expression. In the beginning of the Torah portion, God says to Moses, call upon the entire people of Israel and share with them the Torah, which can be translated as Torah or teaching or manual law, of childbirth. What does it mean to bring a child into a, the world? And then it says, when a woman 
produces seed. That's the word tazria, which was chosen to be the, the, the name for the Torah portion. When a woman produces seed and gives birth to a male. Now, this is a very unique and kind of surprising choice of word because the Torah knows, and definitely the rabbis who are going to bring commentary there, that the woman does not produce seed. The seed comes from the men. The seed comes from the male. But they, in the entire chapter and a half, that is the Torah of childbirth and everything that follows, the male, the potential father, is not mentioned even once. It's all about the woman. The man, the, the male, the, the, the potential father, is not relevant to the Torah of bringing a child into the world. The woman, the potential mother, controls everything, including the, the certain sacrifices and the certain rituals that you're supposed to uh, do after you bring a male or a female into the world. The commentary to that is fascinating, and I want to share with you a commentary that comes from Jewish mysticism, from what is called in American English Kabbalah, or Kab Kab Kabbalah, I think it's uh, pronounced by Americans, uh, and no offense uh, there, and mainly from a book called uh, The Zohar, the most important book of Jewish mysticism from the 13th century in Spain. It's kind of a psychoanalysis of the Torah, the, the entire book. It follows the Torah portions, and it brings a very unique a psychoanalysis, we would call it in our days, understanding of the Torah, of Judaism, of God and of the people of Israel. And here they're taking it and they decide that, that they already are past the rabbinical understanding that childbirth is controlled by the woman, which uh, is something that I think that in the 21st century in the United States of America is not yet an, uh, accepted <laughs> by everyone. So the Torah is way ahead of us. So th that, that's not of interest to the Zohar because that's already established in uh, the Torah. They're into the issue of gender and they bring a very unique definition to the difference between sex and gender. And what really interests them is how it is decided and who decides whether the child is going to be a male or a female. Now they already know that the biological process is in control, but that's not good enough for them. So what they're saying is when they're uh, giving commentary to the phrase when a woman produces seed to, to the, the, the phrase tazria is that there are three partners in creating a new child. One is the mother, one is the father, and one is God. And then they ask, what is the role of God in creating a child? And their answer is God gives the child the soul. What does it mean that God gives the child the soul? And they're saying the following. So we have the biological process. So in their eyes, I'm not a doctor, I have no idea if they're correct medically or not, but in their eyes, the, the process of a woman producing seed is the biological process that decides what we would call a, whether it's a Y chromosome or an X chromosome, whether it's a male and a female. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is that God gives the soul and God decrees whether it's a soul that has masculine qualities or is it a soul that has feminine qualities or it's a soul that has both or neither. And they're, they're saying that it's not enough that biologically the seed is feminine or masculine. 
you need also the divine intervention uh, uh, in there. So in the 13th century, we have a major Jewish source that actually makes a definition between uh, the choice of sex and the choice of gender, saying that, that just the biological sex is not enough, that, that, that there is another thing called gender. And then they explain that gender is the soul, meaning the, the spirit, the quality, the, the inner being of the, the child or of the person. Now, they take it one step ahead. I hope I haven't lost you uh, yet. <laughs> and they say, we are created in the image of God. So let's talk about the gender of God in order to understand uh, how we are created. Now, uh, it, it would have been easier to explain if we were in the Klein Center, because above the Klein uh, uh, Center's arc, there is a, a kind of an artistic thing that has the traditional Jewish mysticism understanding of the different qualities of God, the ten spheres. There are ten qualities. They don't have names there, but actually in the Zohar they do have a name. And some of those qualities are feminine and some of them are masculine. And all of them is one God. They didn't believe that there are ten different gods. It's one God with ten different qualities, which you could call them dimensions or you can call them spheres. And in their eyes, the feminine qualities are love and kindness, compassion, softness, the masculine qualities, no offense to us men, are harshness and judgment and power and violence. And those qualities are fluid. And God kind of maneuvers and moves between the feminine and the masculine a qualities and it's not rigid, it's not defined, and it's not in competition. It actually creates wholeness between compassion and judgment, between harshness and softness, and when there is that fluidity between them, then the world is enjoying a better God, a more whole God, there. And just like God is created with different qualities, both feminine and masculine, so are we. And they, be, they, they go back to Tazria, that when a woman produces seed, that that is the beginning where a God decides whether it's a male or a female or none of the above, but still every human being, just like God, keeps moving uh, between our feminine and our masculine uh, qualities. And if we can adapt all of our qualities, then we reach the wholeness of God. Shabbat Shalom.
Please rise as we turn to page 294 for the Aleinu, the Adoration. And we read together at the top of page 294. Let us adore the ever-living God, we render praise unto you, who spread out the heavens and established the earth. Your glory is revealed in the heavens above, and your greatness is manifest throughout the world. You are our God, there is none else. We bow our heads in reverence before the Eternal One, source of life. Continue reading together. May the time not be distant, O God, when your name shall be worshipped in all the earth, when unbelief shall disappear and enter. Fervently we pray. page 299. Our thoughts now turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people, the six million who perished in the Shoah, and those of every race, nation, and faith whose lives have been a blessing to humanity, the departed we now remember have entered into the peace of life eternal. They still live on earth in the acts of goodness they performed and in the hearts of those who cherish their memory. May the beauty of their lives abide among us as a loving benediction. On this Shabbat we remember especially Paula Erdli, Jonathan Zaborski, William Glick, Stan Natowitz, Anne Sherman, Marsha Toftland, Rosalie Fleischaker, Anne Marin Bloom Herman, Lillian Lansky, Roy Lee, Michael Renko, Elise Sales, Sylvan Stiebel, Carol Margolis, Margaret Mosseson, Alan Flank, Sylvia Weingarten, Loretta Goldstein, Rick Haskell, Leonard Marx, Marcus Breyer, Kenneth Grossman, Gladys Fleischaker Meyer, Benjamin Moger, Julia Penso, Thelma Weiss, Rose Snyder Hamel, Howard Levine, Goodman Tasman, Richard Uslander, Carl N. Bazi Victor Jr., Felix Weingarten, Michael Harry Brody, Libby Price, Miriam Weinstein.
We rise now as we turn to page 300 for the mourners' Kaddish. Yidgadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba Be'alma divra cherutei ve'yamlich malchutei Be'chayichon u'v'yomichon u'v'chayei d'chol b'yit Yisrael Ba'agala u'v'zman kariv ve'imru amen יהי שמי רבה מברך לעלם ולעולמי עולמיה יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל שמי דקודשה בריחו לעילה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן יהא שלמה רבה מן שמיה וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort all who are bereaved and let us say Amen, Amen. Our closing song is on page 372, All the World. Shabbat Shalom everyone, please wish Shabbat Shalom to someone you do not know and to those you do know and please join us in the Oneg uh, outside, Shabbat Shalom.